Information Radio. This is Steve Powers from New York, and at this hour, Nicholas Papa. The three astronauts are working in Skylab now, and the first part of their mission appears to be a success. The parasol they put in place yesterday is doing its job. Mission Control in Houston says temperatures in the work area of Skylab have dropped about 30 degrees. President Nixon... It's cooling off slowly. The three astronauts say some of the metal surfaces in the huge orbiting workshop are still too hot to touch, but it's cool down around their sleeping quarters, and tonight they expect to spend their first night aboard Skylab. Space scientists say the partly deployed parasol is doing its job well. They expect temperatures aboard to be down around 70 degrees in a few days. President Nick. News. Dan Rather reporting on the CBS Radio Network. Good evening. Right. Weiss and Kerwin continue to put Skylab into operation. They zipped around the ship today, turning on its various switches, among them the one which transmitted the first color television pictures of their working quarters. The damaged spaceship is still hot, about 100 degrees, but the sunshade installed last night is bringing the temperature slowly down. Yes. Good evening. The Skylab mission worth $2.6 billion apparently is going to work. That's the main story in the news today. We'll also have a review of what happened in the Watergate story this past week and a look at the events of the coming week. But we begin with three men and an umbrella in space. The temperature is dropping and hopes are rising inside the Skylab Space Laboratory. That's the result of a large umbrella the astronauts put up outside their space vehicle to protect it from the sun. Temperatures inside Skylab dropped from 125 degrees last night into the 90s today. And astronauts Conrad, Kerwin, and White started to prepare for their scientific work. Here's a report from Roy Neal. Skylab astronauts Conrad, Kerwin, and White have spent a busy and profitable day in their orbital workshop, turning on and checking out its equipment. Everything seems to be in remarkably good condition, even after baking in unplanned, very high temperatures for more than 11 days. The spacecraft is cooling down after a dramatic four-hour repair job, a space first accomplished last night by the astronauts. Late last night, they took these pictures on board as they finally managed to deploy a jury-rigged orange-colored parasol sun shield outside the workshop. In position, the parasol drooped a little, but it provided enough shade in the critical area. The workshop temperatures began dropping slowly. The astronauts spent the night in their command module. Today, they turned on the television inside the workshop, and they seem to be having a lot of fun. We've got a good view of all the food lockers now, looking straight down to the trash airlock. Okay, here comes the CDR just coming through the dome hatch now on his way. I hope he doesn't crash. You'll notice he blew that one over. We must admit that he hasn't been practicing with a soaked home in one hand. Roger. Wow. Today's television showed for the first time the room inside the workshop the largest spaceship ever flown by men. The camera was at the top end, with food lockers in the foreground. Two floors below, in the center of the picture, you can see the waste disposal lock, through which the astronauts later will throw out their trash. Early today, they described the temperature as about 105 degrees, but not unpleasant, and still dropping slowly. Late in the day, it was well below 100, and by tomorrow, should be down in the 80s. That's when the astronauts hope to move in permanently and settle down to more than three weeks of experiment. A long stay in space, made possible by the repair jobs at work. Roy Neal, NBC News, Houston. One of the results of these Skylab difficulties is that it confirms the usefulness of having men in space, men who can repair when something goes wrong. No machine could have saved the Skylab program. 
Here's the latest worldwide news from the American Entertainment Network. Stan Martin in New York reporting. Kerwin and Whites are settling down aboard their space laboratory, cleaning up and getting ready for the start of their experiments tomorrow. The laboratory itself is cooling off with the aid of the sunshade put up by the astronauts. With motor... Here's the latest worldwide news from the American Entertainment Network. Joe Keller in Los Angeles reporting. It's been a busy day in the space station. With more details, ABC's Merrill Muller at Skylab News Center. Conrad, Kerwin, and White have acclimated rapidly to the weightlessness and the huge dimensions of mankind's largest spaceship. They have reported everything in remarkably good and operable condition, despite the excessive vibrations at Skylab's liftoff and the intense heating period that followed. Skylab continues to cool down under its handyman sunshade, and the astronauts have almost completed preparations for its orbital science work. Merrill Muller, ABC, Skylab News Center. news from the American Entertainment Network. This is Bob Wilson in New York reporting. This morning, as physician astronaut Dr. Joseph Kerwin took blood samples from all three crewmen of Skylab, it was at the beginning of the astronaut's fourth full day in space and the beginning of a series of medical experiments designed to be a benefit to all mankind. This sunshade is cooling things off to livable temperatures, and the Skylab astronauts today began their actual work. Dr. Joseph Kerwin drew blood samples of the crew, starting systematic observation of the physiological effect of prolonged weightlessness. But with all that's happened, they don't want to overdo things. Steve Young reports. Dr. Joe Kerwin, who yesterday went shoeless inside Skylab, today is working shirtless inside the wardroom of the workshop. The three crewmen say temperatures are livable, but they want at this point to cut back on some medical experiments, which might exhaust them if conducted in the 95 degree heat. As Mission Control watched, the crew turned on TV about a half hour ago, the camera aimed at the astronauts floating around their living quarters. Commander Conrad waved at one point, and Paul White squirted himself a drink from a sort of water gun. Steve Young, CBS News, Johnson Space Center, Houston. There is, of course, no weather at all out in space, but no weather is a great deal better than what most Americans are having down here. Senator in the night. News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is George Engel from New York. And at this hour, Senator in Comfortable today with temperatures down another 5 degrees overnight into the high 80s. Mission Commander Pete Conrad noticed a hot spot on one inner wall of the workshop because of a wrinkle in the sunshade. And Conrad radioed down to Mission Control in Houston. I think we're going to have to live with that, but uh, if the temperatures keep coming down the way you say they are, why well, it's going to get real pleasant in here. It's not really bad now. I, I wouldn't want to be right to bicycle or anything. That bicycle, Pete Conrad mentioned, one of the exercise devices to provide medical data on the effects of space on man. The major medical experiments in Skylab have begun with blood samples taken by Dr. Joe Kerwin from his fellow Skylab astronauts at the beginning of their fourth day in space. This is ABC Information Radio. News of the hour on the hour. From American Information Radio, this is George Caldwell from New York. And at this hour, more electrical power can be generated for the space laboratory during a news conference from space this afternoon, Conrad explained. I'm sure that the other flight with the proper tools, now that we know exactly what's hanging it up, uh, can get that solar panel out, even if we don't. Conrad says his crew may try to unjam the solar panel toward the end of their visit to Skylab. This... Here's the latest worldwide news from the American Entertainment Network. Roger Grimsby in New York reporting. At high Skylab are undergoing medical tests, and it appears they will stay the program for weeks. Pete Conrad thinks the relief crew will be able to fix the solar panel that is still stuck. Asked about that, Conrad said, I'm sure that the other flight with the proper tools, now that we know exactly what's hanging it up, uh, can get that solar panel out, even if we don't. 
with the other flight with the proper tools, now that we know exactly what's hanging it up, uh, can get that solar panel out, even if we don't. But Conrad does think that his crew may get it fixed even before then. Iceland... The Super Kicker, with the best music in town. KBUC, San Antonio. Time at the tone will be 3 o'clock. News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is John Grimes in New York. And at this hour... Sir Charles Conrad told newsmen back in Houston this afternoon he and his three-man crew will complete their 28-day stay in Skylab. Conrad says he sees no new problems. Conrad, Kerwin, and Weiss are now on the fourth day aboard Skylab. Ian Terrell Hills, Texas, Metroplex temperature check, 88 degrees and heading for 93. Here's the latest worldwide news from the American Entertainment Network. This is Bob Wilson in New York reporting. Skylab 1 is cooling. The three crewmen say they're beginning to feel at home, cooking meals and settling down to scientific and medical studies. That's the top of the news. When you... Radio Texas, it's 5 o'clock. News time. For news from where it's being made, gathered by Network Radio's largest news staff, here's news around the world. This is John Grimes for American Information Radio in New York who held a brief news conference from space this afternoon. In Houston, newsman asked Commander Pete Conrad if after four days in space, he and the three-man crew of Skylab have reached any conclusions. Well, the first thing that's obvious to me is that man can work up here. And uh, surprisingly enough, in the workshop, we are doing uh, what I consider a lot more physical task, that is, exercising our muscles than I thought we would, which has been one of the problems that I thought we might have. Pete Conrad also says he, Kerwin, and Weitz are all go for a full 28 days aboard Skylab. I... This was the fourth day in space for the three Skylab astronauts, and they now appear to have accomplished their first significant objective, making their threatened space station livable. The astronauts held a televised news conference today and expressed confidence in the future of the mission. ABC Science Editor Jules Bergman reports. With the TV camera looking in at their kitchen or wardroom, Pete Conrad, Dr. Joe Kerwin, and Paul Weitz were busy with housekeeping chores when the news conference began. Kerwin, the first U.S. physician to fly in space, was asked if they had trouble adapting to life in the huge workshop. You do have a sense of up and down, and you can change it in two seconds whenever it's convenient to you. Uh, if you go from one module into the other and you're upside down, Spacecraft Commander Pete Conrad showed people on the ground their view from the spacecraft's kitchen window. Hey, this is really pretty out the window. I'm glad you asked about that. We're just passing over Puget Sound. It's a very clear day today. We can see Vancouver Island. I can see Cool Whitney Island and Bob Rainier. I, I'm looking forward to a successful flight at Skyland of 28 days. Uh, I think we overcame our problems, and I think we will improve uh, on what we have get that other solar panel out, and uh, right now we're in good shape, I think, to stay 28 days and complete the flight. With the Skylab mission now turned around from failure to success, the crew began their medical experiment, the first of dozens, settling into the routine of learning to live for a month in space, which no one has ever done before. This is Jules Bergman at ABC Space Headquarters. This is KDBC Radio News, brought to you by... This is the world tonight. Good evening, I'm Douglas Edwards, CBS News. Okay. And considerable optimism from Pete Conrad over the chances of spending a full 28 days in the space laboratory. Steve Young brings us up to date from the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Well, the 
first time since the start of the Crisis Mark mission, the crew today got down to the business of living and working inside a space station circling the Earth. The physician aboard, Dr. Joe Kerwin, drew blood samples, and there were more medical tests in the afternoon. The astronauts have adjusted well to their new home and adopted a certain informality. Yesterday, Dr. Kerwin floated around in bare feet. Today, he didn't bother to wear a shirt. Newsmen were allowed to submit questions radioed up from mission control. Asked if he thought it possible to conduct the full 28-day flight, Commander Conrad was a man of two words, you betcha. And why, reporters wanted to know, was Joe Kerwin the only crewman who failed to resort to profanity when they had repeated trouble docking the command ship with Skylab? Kerwin answered tongue-in-cheek, I guess I was too stupid to understand the seriousness of the situation. Tomorrow, they'll move on to new experiments, and for the first time, the big telescope mount will be turned on to view the sun. Steve Young, CBS News, Johnson Space Center, Houston. We'll have a report on a Soviet military defection in one minute. FM San Antonio. News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is John Grimes in New York. And at this hour in Athens, Bill of Health today, and the three Skylab astronauts say they're set to spend their entire 28 days aboard Skylab. The Skylab crew has begun a series of medical experiments to measure how efficiently man can work in weightless space. ERH in Houston. CBS News, Stuart Nopins reporting on the CBS radio network. Uh, reported back to Earth today that they see no problems ahead. Now that the laboratory is cooling off, they say they can fulfill the scheduled 28-day mission. The commander, Pete Conrad, says the Skylab vehicle is now in excellent shape. More. From American Information Radio, this is George Engel from New York. And at this hour, the Skylab mission is beginning to pay off with scientific information. More on that story from ABC correspondent Merrill Miller at the Skylab News Center. Science pilot Joe Kerwin reports overly bright X-ray pictures of the sun through Skylab's solar telescope. He worked the controls over Goldstone, California to let ground controllers assist in focusing the ultraviolet images. These sun pictures are sent in digital form and processed on the ground. Pete Conrad and Paul Weitz are checking out the Earth resources, cameras, and sensors for use later. Conrad held a private conversation with Houston's key figures on flight operations. A summary of that exchange is promised later. Merrill Muller, ABC, Skylab News Center. At the tone, 1 p.m. And Commander Pete Conrad requested and got a private conversation with Mission Control in Houston today. The director of the Space Center, Christopher Kraft, the astronaut office chief, Donald Slayton, joined the conversation at Conrad's request. Later, NASA issued a summary of what it said was the private talk. The summary quotes Conrad as mildly questioning whether the bicycle exerciser can conveniently be operated in the 80-degree temperatures aboard Skylab. Harry Reasoner's on assignment. These are tonight's headlines. An Air Force colonel accuses eight enlisted men of misconduct while head in the North Viet held in the North Vietnamese prison camp in which he was senior officer. Canada announces it will withdraw its peace observer contingent from Vietnam by July 31st. Henry Kissinger says he's reached new understandings with North Vietnam on stricter enforcement of the Vietnam ceasefire. And the White House says it would be constitutionally inappropriate for President Nixon to testify at any Watergate inquiry. Reports tonight from Frank Tomlinson on a senior officer's charges against other former POWs, Tom Jarrell on Henry Kissinger's report of progress at the Paris talks, David Schumacher on the arrival of China's diplomatic envoy in Washington, Jim Kincaid on a Senate inquiry into the gas shortage among independent operators, George Watson on the engagement of a member of Britain's royal family, and tonight's comment on reaching a workable truce in Indochina. 
That was a great Bob Wills and Big Beaver by special request, News Tide. Lowell Thomas brings the news from Ottawa, from Washington, from Buckingham Palace comes today's news as reported by Reed Collins, substituting for Lowell Thomas. Now, 59 KTBC, Austin, Texas. The time at the tone, 9 o'clock. Reporting on the CBS Radio Network. Here's the latest worldwide news from the American Entertainment Network. This is John Cameron in New York reporting. Thomas did not start working today with the special cameras and other sensitive instruments that will be aimed at the Earth. It now looks as though Skylab's cabin temperatures are going to stay in the 80s, about 10 degrees hotter than they'd hoped. ABC's Merrill Muller says the heat may force the astronauts to cut back on some of their medical experiments, but there is no plan to shorten the length of the mission. The Pentagon... Here is the latest worldwide news from the American Entertainment Network. This is Bob Wilson in New York reporting. Been selling and advertising as non-burning or self-extinguishing are actually not fireproof but combustible, according to the Federal Trade Commission. The commission this morning in a class action. 5 p.m. CBS News. This is Reed Collins reporting on the CBS Radio Network. What was it? These are tonight's headlines. Another serious crash halts the second start of the Indianapolis 500-mile auto race. Thomas Bradley, the son of Texas sharecroppers, defeats Sam Yorty to become the first black mayor-elect of Los Angeles. President Nixon and French President Pompidou arrive in Iceland for two days of summit talks, and the Federal Trade Commission accuses the plastics industry of falsely promoting some foam plastics as non-flammable. Reports tonight from Jim McKay on the second day of disaster at the Indianapolis 500, Ann Kessner on the plans of the black mayor-elect of Los Angeles, Don Farmer on Iceland and the French-American summit meeting, Jim Kincaid on the reply of one accused former POW to charges of misconduct, George Watson on Princess Anne and her dashing lieutenant today, and tonight's comment on Washington, D.C.'s amazing capital gains. Yeah. Good evening, I'm Douglas Edwards, CBS News. President Around 84 degrees today, and astronauts Conrad, Kerwin, and White were able to continue their experiments without too much trouble. The World Tonight continues after this message. The time at the sound of the tone, 10 p.m. CBS News, Mitchell Krauss reporting on the CBS radio network. The incident forced space officials to cancel tomorrow's plan to photograph Earth resources. Otherwise, all appeared to be A-OK -okay on board Skylab as the astronauts prepared for their sixth night in space. There were some problems tonight with the power supply on Skylab. Houston controllers had to revise the flight plan again as batteries were powered down. But a few moments ago, Houston said the power problem on Skylab has now been solved. Houston gives no further details. Here's the latest worldwide news from the American Entertainment Network. Tom Shell in Los Angeles reporting. The astronauts are not considered in any danger. The problem has cut about 25% of the electrical power available to the Skylab. NASA has now revised the flight plan for Skylab to work around the power problem. Efforts are now underway to find a permanent solution. President News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is Richard Wall from Los Angeles, and at this hour out an entirely new flight plan for Thursday for the astronauts because of the power problem on the workshop. The trouble came up when Skylab had to switch from its solar cell generators to onboard batteries when the solar cells were not facing the sun. 
The power shortage is no threat to the three astronauts, but NASA has canceled a second Earth Resources survey, and attention's gone back to freeing that jammed solar panel on Skylab to increase power for the work remaining. And News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is Richard Wall from Los Angeles, and at this hour, the U.S. and whites are asleep, but they'll still face problems when they wake up in the morning. Correspondent Merrill Muller reports from ABC Skylab News Center. The Skylab astronauts said goodnight to ground controllers with no concern over their increasing number of electrical bugs. Yet another major revision of the flight plan has been sent up to them. Skylab now has both a crippled electrical power system from the sun and an erratic electrical reserve in its batteries. Ground controllers canceled all work with the Earth Resources experiments for tomorrow to troubleshoot the battery problem. The Sun Telescope can be used all day. Houston Control is also re-examining ideas for repairs on the parasol heat shade and that jammed solar wing. Merrill Muller, ABC, Skylab News Center. Skylab astronauts have a provision. News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is Bob Walker from New York. And at this hour, report feeling fine this morning. Skylab does have a power problem because of a battery system failure, and the astronauts have had to cancel a planned Earth resources experiment. One of Here's the latest worldwide news from the American Entertainment Network. Wally Parker in New York reporting. Us got orders from ground controllers in Houston this morning to conserve electricity and cancel today's studies of Earth resources. The latest electrical problem on Skylab comes from a failure in the battery system that stores electricity generated from sunlight. Progress is being made on repairs. Here's correspondent Merrill Muller at the ABC Skylab News Center. Paul Weitz has just succeeded in repairing an ultraviolet star camera, which had jammed. It was throwing off electrical bugs also. Weitz took it apart and simply rebuilt it. Pete Conrad has complained again to ground controllers that so many handyman jobs are scheduled back-to-back, -back, it's a problem carrying the right tools. The big solar telescope continues to work successfully. No progress has been reported yet on the problems in the Earth Resources cameras, which will not be used today. Conrad, by the way, has figured out a way to run literally run around the spaceship water tanks. It's going to be a TV spectacular soon. Merrill Muller, ABC, Skylab News Center. San Antonio, Texas. It's 12 noon, news time. News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is George Engel from New York, and at this hour, the Defense Department... In temperatures to 82 degrees, but that relief came only because some of the electrical equipment had to be turned off because of a power problem. The astronauts are troubleshooting that problem now. Senators James Buckley... ...reports tonight from Frank Mariano on a Cambodian city that has been saved from capture by American bombs, Tom Jarrell on the lack of progress at the Iceland summit meeting, Bill Zimmerman on H.R. Haldeman's testimony to a Senate subcommittee on Watergate and the CIA, and Medina on a former POW accused of aiding the enemy but who is still a hero at home, Don Farmer on an ingenious Englishman who has found a substitute for gasoline in the barnyard, and tonight's comment on the election of a black mayor in Los Angeles. I'll see you in the morning about 6, I reckon, for a set. You into the Super Kick and K Buck, K B U C. 1310 San Antonio with the best music in town. No brag, just back. News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is Bob Walker from New York. And at this hour. Charles Osgood reporting on the CBS Radio Network. San Antonio, Texas. News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is George Engel from New York, and at this hour, Fred Proof. 
Another change of plans for the Skylab mission. The date of the next manned Skylab launch was moved up 12 days this morning to July 27th. Project officials say the orbit of the workshop can't be controlled as well from the ground without a crew aboard. ABC's Merrill Muller says there's no indication that the astronauts now aboard Skylab will be brought down early. 1 p.m. CBS News, this is Reed Collins reporting on the CBS radio network. Considering a walk in space next week for the orbiting Skylab crew to try and saw free that stuck solar panel. Tests are being conducted now at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama to see if some feasible plan can be worked out. Without that energy producing panel, Skylab seems crippled for power. And with that in mind, space officials have moved up the planned launch of the next Skylab crew to July 27th. News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is Steve Powers from New York, and at this hour, the official says Skylab's astronauts might take a spacewalk as early as next Tuesday to try to free a stuck solar panel. The lack of electrical power has forced the cutback on experiments, and the space agency has announced the next Skylab crew will be launched 12 days early, July 27th. <laughs> 3 p.m. CBS News, this is Reed Collins reporting on the CBS radio network. We've been doing some light housekeeping chores on this, their official day off, but space officials are busy planning to try to get around the electrical shortage. They've moved up the launch of the next Skylab crew by 12 days to July 27th, fearing Skylab may be running down sooner than planned. Meanwhile, some tests are being made in Huntsville, Alabama, to see if the current crew may be allowed to go outside the workshop, try to cut free that solar wing damaged during liftoff. This repair effort could take place as soon as next Tuesday. So Here's the latest worldwide news from the American Entertainment Network, Bill Butel in New York reporting. Skylab may be taking a spacewalk as early as Tuesday. Their mission would be to repair the solar power wing that is not working and hopefully to increase the electricity aboard Skylab by something like 50%. Wall Street, Dow Jones. Texas. For news from where it's being made, gathered by Network Radio's largest news staff, here's news around the world. This is John Grimes for American Information Radio in New York. President Bill may try another spacewalk to get a jammed solar electric panel working on Skylab. The hijacking of a... At the tone, 9 o'clock. CBS News. This is Ann Carlton reporting on the CBS Radio Network. Worldwide news from the American Entertainment Network, Art Van Horn in New York, reporting. The nations which can call on the mechanics. ABC's Merrill Muller reports from Skylab News Center. Three different astronaut crews have been given repair assignments to keep the crippled Skylab useful until Christmas. Pete Conrad's team up there now may attempt a spacewalk next week to repair Skylab's jammed power wing. Skylab's power will increase more than 50% if the wing can be opened. NASA has announced that Al Bean's crew will be launched July 27th, 12 days early, for more repairs. And Gerald Carr's third astronaut team can carry up other parts plus power augmentation to Skylab in October. Merrill Muller, ABC Skylab News Center. On the hour, from American Information Radio, this is George Caldwell from New York. And at this hour, astronauts right now are taking showers. It's the first time that's ever been done in space. See San Antonio, Texas. News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is Steve Powers from New York, and at this hour, it's an energy crisis of its own, and the astronauts have been told to conserve electricity wherever possible. Cabin lights have been dimmed aboard Skylab, but Mission Control in Houston says there should be enough power at the end of the day to avoid trouble. But Mission Control says there's not too much electricity to spare. It's one o'clock. News of 
the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is Steve Powers from New York, and at this hour, astronauts are back at work with research experiments on Earth and space resources. The power problem is still plaguing the mission, and efforts are being made to conserve electricity, including dimming the Skylab lights. It is known 4 p.m. CBS News, Alan Jackson reporting on the CBS Radio Network. Check on fishing patterns in the waters on Earth, especially in the Gulf of Mexico. Today, a flotilla of fishing boats set sail on the Gulf to collect fish and information to check with information provided by Skylab. Thousands of sports fishermen will take part in the experiment over the next three months using information on fishing areas likely to prove productive as determined earlier by research vessels. One comment on the overall test was offered by the Director of Oceanography at Florida State University, Dr. Robert Smith. He said, we hope to learn a good deal about the migrating habits of fish, where they spawn and breed, and where they come from. Time at the town, exactly 6 p.m. CBS News. John Meyer reporting on the CBS Radio Network. News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is John McVeigh in New York. At this hour, a shortage. ABC's John Pollock reports from the Houston Space Center. Skylab astronauts pointed cameras and instruments at the Earth from San Francisco southeastward through Mexico this afternoon. Such Earth observations are being limited to about one-third of their originally planned length because of the electric power shortage aboard the space station. The astronauts may do a spacewalk next week to make a second attempt at fixing a blocked solar power wing. Power output from the space station's good solar panels will increase sharply during the last week of June when Skylab gets the greatest amount of sunshine. The astronauts are scheduled to return to Earth June 22nd. But officials here at the Johnson Space Center say they might keep the astronauts in space for an extra 10 days to use the increased electric power for scientific research. John Pollock, ABC News, Johnson Space Center. News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is John McVeigh in New York at this hour. The latest worldwide news from the American Entertainment Network, Joe Kelly in Los Angeles reporting. Get the most information possible from the $2 billion space project. A NASA official in Houston says by lengthening the mission, it would mean the space station would still be manned when the orbit of the station carries it into a position that allows sunlight to hit power-producing cells practically all the time. This means that the increased sunlight would boost the power available even if the astronauts weren't able to fix the jammed solar wing. Here's the latest worldwide news from the American Entertainment Network, Joe Kelly in Los Angeles reporting. In Houston today, the Skylab astronauts may spend an extra 10 days in space so they can get the most out of their mission. A crowd of about... Who's... Good morning, this is Bob Pinal with KBUC Headlines News on the Hour, a broadcast presentation of KBUC Radio. Space Lab One mission is about, is about to set a world record for the first time spin in space. NASA, NASA officials say that uh, they may extend Sky, Sp Sky Lab mission 10 more days. Texas. News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is John McVeigh in New York. And at this hour, Chairman Today are using their powerful telescopes to search for possible oil and diamonds near Chihuahua, Mexico. Scientists believe the cameras can help locate deposits of hydrocarbons which include oil, coal, and diamonds. While he was asleep this morning, Skylab Commander Charles Conrad set a new record for time spent by man in space. This is ABC Information Radio. And photographs that the astronauts took will be examined after they return to Earth for evidence of coal and oil 
in the state of Chihuahua, Mexico. ABC's John Pollock at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. NASA officials say technicians are still working to determine the best way to try fixing a solar power panel aboard Skylab 1. If a spacewalk is okayed, command pilot Pete Conrad will be given the final decision on when the attempt is made and which of the three astronauts will do it. Meanwhile, the Soviet news agency TAS reports Lunokhod 2 has completed its work on the moon. Lunokhod 2 is an unmanned vehicle that was landed on the moon's Sea of Serenity January 16th. Now this. Here's the latest worldwide news from the American Entertainment Network. Bill Deal in New York reporting. CBS News. Dallas Townsend reporting on the CBS Radio Network. News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is Bob Walker from New York. And at this hour, Alabama today, they will make the decision later on on whether the Skylab astronauts should attempt a spacewalk and try and free a jammed solar panel. Headquarters in New York. This is the CBS Evening News with Roger Mudd, substituting for Walter Cronkite. And in Washington, Eric Severide, Fred Graham, Bernard Kalb at the White House, Richard Throwkeld in Lake Tahoe, Nevada, Terry Drinkwater in Meadow Vista, California, Robert Pierpoint in Hayme, Iceland, and Charles Osgood in Annapolis, Maryland. Green light for a spacewalk to try to fix a broken power generator. NASA said the walk will occur no earlier than Thursday. The go-ahead was based in part on a simulated exercise carried out by the Skylab backup crew today in Huntsville, Alabama. Morton Dean narrates. Working underwater because that simulates working in outer space, the Skylab astronauts will attempt to make their repairs the way their waterlogged colleagues did today. It is likely that only one astronaut will leave the spacecraft and work his way down along the side to the damaged solar panel. No more dangerous than any other walk in space is the way the space agency sees it, but more than just a typical stroll, nothing ever as demanding before. Several tools are available to cut or yank the solar panel free, a crowbar, there are metal cutters, and a saw. This saw worked 45 seconds to cut through during the test, and the metal cutters work, too. Now all they have to do is work as well out there. Morton Dean, CBS News, New York. CBS News, Dallas Townsend reporting on the CBS radio network. On its original schedule, 28 days, no matter what the outcome of Thursday's spacewalk, Commander Pete Conrad and fellow astronaut Joe Kerbin will try to repair the solar power panel that was damaged soon after liftoff. The Dow News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is George Engel from New York, and at this hour, the Senate... ...runs with Mission Control in Houston this morning. No indication of any problem aboard the workshop, even though private conversations are not normal procedure. Conrad made his request after detailed plans for repairs on Skylab were set up this morning. Space agency officials say Conrad's crew will not stay up there more than the planned 28 days. 2 p.m. CBS News, Douglas Edwards reporting on the CBS radio network. And Pete Conrad has told ground control at Houston not to over-worry about his health. This word of caution delivered by Conrad in the private conversation he held a while ago with the NASA officials who, he felt, were overreacting to the monitor readings of his heartbeat. This is Douglas Edwards, CBS News. Exactly, 3 o'clock. from American Information Radio. This is John Grimes in New York, and at this hour... I'm Harry Reasoner in New York. These are tonight's headlines. In a sworn statement, John Ehrlichman says he was told that Watergate conspirator G. Gordon Letty once threatened to kill Jeb Magruder. 
The Irvin Committee formally turns down the request for postponement by Special Prosecutor Archibald Cox and resumed its televis- televised hearing on Watergate. The President is reported considering toughening current economic controls. And the stock market rallies sharply on that news, but the dollar takes another beating on European money markets. Howard? Reports tonight from Sam Donaldson on today's testimony at the Senate Watergate hearing. Jerry Landay on a charge by Senator Hugh Scott that some people are out to get the President. Dick Shoemaker on Daniel Ellsberg's appearance before a grand jury looking into the break-in at his psychiatrist's office. Tom Jarrell on White House talk of tougher economic controls. Barry Dunsmore on the impact of the dollar crisis on one American family living abroad. And tonight's comment on the wisdom of the televised Watergate hearings. Friends of the News. From outer space. From the White House. From Paris comes today's news as reported by America's foremost newscaster, Lowell Thomas. Now, here is Lowell Thomas and the news. Good evening, everybody. First, a triple salute to the newest members of the CBS radio network. WEST, Eastern Pennsylvania. KIXI, Seattle, where I so often stop going and coming. Also stationed WEMT, Milwaukee. I'm out today to permit another private radio conversation. Mission Commander Pete Conrad, fearing the doctors were overly concerned about his heart action during an earlier exercise test. He was assured that such was not so. Director Chris Kraft of the Manned Space Center telling Pete Conrad he's actually in fine shape, adding that all systems are still go for the spacewalk Thursday to free the Skylab's jammed solar power wing. What? This is John Grimes for American Information Radio in New York with World Wrap Up, the sounds of the news on this Tuesday, June 5th, 1973. CBS News, Dallas Townsend reporting on the CBS Radio Network. Al Hart at work rehearsing the spacewalk that Pete Conrad and Joseph Kerwin will take tomorrow in hopes of easing their power shortage. To judge from one conversation this morning, they also seem to be short of good news. Raj, uh, we tried that for a while, but uh, the news has been so bad, or so boring, that uh, it hasn't been anything worthwhile passing up to you. I guess about the only thing going on is still Watergate and you guys. You keep us posted on how we're doing, will you? Okay. As the astronauts probably know by now, the Senate Watergate Committee is scheduled to begin another public session at this hour. News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is Bob Walker from New York, and at this hour, the lab space station that started acting up last night is still losing power. The Skylab astronauts today will rehearse inside tomorrow's outside spacewalk. Commander Pete Conrad will try and loosen the jammed power panel, and if that's successful, the Skylab's electric power would be almost doubled. It's one o'clock. News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is Steve Powers from New York, and at this hour, those long spacewalk tomorrow to free a jammed solar wing. The spacewalk appears even more crucial now after a report that another battery is weakening aboard Skylab, reducing the available electricity. Speculated. Two p.m. CBS News. Douglas Edwards reporting on the CBS Radio Network. The- Astronauts are practicing what may turn out to be the mission's most important task. Steve Young reports from Houston. It's been a sort of semi-dress rehearsal. Commander Pete Conrad, as expected, is walking, or perhaps floating is the more precise word, through the motions of tomorrow's spacewalk in shirt sleeves. But Dr. Joe Kerwin has decided to do his part loosely wearing his spacesuit. Backup 
crewman Rusty Schweikert has been watching the crew on TV inside Mission Control. It was Schweikert who worked out most of the possible repair techniques, simulating weightlessness in an underwater tank. Conrad and Kerwin are asking questions, Schweikert offering general tips. How to rig the various tools, how to use them, and maneuver once the astronauts get outside the space station. Preparing that solar wing has become even more urgent. There's a new battery problem that has further cut back the supply of electrical power. Steve Young, CBS News, Johnson Space Center, Houston. being made, gathered by Network Radio's largest news staff. Here's news around the world. This is John Grimes for American Information Radio in New York. Hugh W. Today, rehearsing. Rehearsing the risky spacewalk they plan to do tomorrow. They were compressing into one day of hard work, a practice schedule that would normally take a week here on Earth. Their task now to repair the Skylab's jammed solar power wing. Along the way, Bill, Mission Commander Pete Conrad saying, I guess we'll know better when we see it, but our initial impression is that we've got a 50-50 chance to pull it off. And a few prayers, Lowell, along with a smile from Lady Luck, should do it. The kicker for San Antonio. for American Information Radio in New York with World Wrap-Up, the sounds of the news on this Wednesday, June 6th, 1973. In the top of the news, the prosecutor asks for a blackout. Mel Laird back on duty, house votes on minimum wage. We'll have those and other stories in a moment. The tone, 10 o'clock. CBS News, Mitchell Krauss reporting on the CBS Radio Network. Here's the latest worldwide news from the American Entertainment Network. Tom Shell in Los Angeles reporting. He's walking about 11 hours to try and release a solar panel on the Skylab 1. The panel is held folded against the Skylab by an aluminum strap. Conrad will have to cut or pry the strap loose. Conrad thinks his chances are only 50-50, but NASA officials say they think it's much better than even. We asked ABC's John Pollock at the Johnson Space Center in Houston about the project. Pete Conrad's backup man here on the ground, astronaut Rusty Schweikert, has been working in a water tank designed to simulate the effects of zero gravity, rehearsing the procedures that Conrad will have to go through tomorrow on the spacewalk in order to release that blocked solar energy panel. Schweikert says it's an exhausting exercise, but he's quite confident that Conrad will be able to do the job. He says it's always easier to work in real zero gravity than it is to work in water, and no one has more experience right now than Pete Conrad at working in zero gravity. ABC's John Pollock at the Johnson Space Center in Texas. Conrad is to begin his spacewalk about noon Eastern Time. CBS News, Mitchell Cross reporting on the CBS radio network. How the astronauts of Skylab are due to wake up for a day that includes the long-awaited and tricky spacewalk. The operation, the men say, has a 50-50 chance of success. This is Mitchell Krause, CBS News. Continue. Good morning. This is Dallas Townsend with the CBS World News Roundup. In the Skylab project, we'll hear about it from Steve Young of the Johnson Space Center in Houston. This is the make or break day for Skylab. The astronauts either will solve the power shortage problem or fail. A spacewalk is scheduled late this morning in an effort to extend a solar wing that has only partially swung out. With it in place, the full complement of experiments will be possible. Without it, the first Skylab crew will fail in their mission, and things will be much tougher for the two crews to follow, Conrad, Kerwin, and White, up to the space station. The walk could take as little as 90 minutes and up to four hours. Commander Conrad has said he thinks they have only a 50-50 chance of success. After an hour and a half, Conrad fears he and Dr. Joe Kerwin may simply run out of steam. Officially, NASA is maintaining an optimistic profile, but at least some pessimism is creeping in. 
In an interview with CBS News this morning, Skylab Program Director William Schneider said he's still confident, but also swallowing a lot of road aids. Steve Young, CBS News, Johnson Space Center, Houston. from American Information Radio. This is Bob Walker from New York. And at this hour, ready to begin their spacewalk, about three hours from now, Commander Pete Conrad and Joe Kerwin will try to fix a solar panel wing which would almost double the power for the orbiting space lab. There has never been a spacewalk to repair a spaceship. And they... Report coming up later in the program. That and more news after this. Astronauts are ahead of schedule in preparations for their spacewalk, a maneuver outside the Skylab workshop to relieve a power problem. Jay Barbary is standing by at the Kennedy Space Center. Jay, what does it look like? The Skylab astronauts are running ahead of schedule, Russ, in their preparations to step outside of their space station in hopes of freeing a jammed solar panel wing to give Skylab its much-needed electrical power. At this moment, the astronauts could be opening the Skylab hatch to begin the spacewalk one hour and or well, one orbit in one hour and 34 minutes earlier than had been planned. We're monitoring mission control, listening with you to see if the spacewalk begins early. They're now over the Carnarvon, Australia tracking station, and they should be in contact with mission control, but we're not hearing a word out of mission control at this time. Nothing to indicate that the hatch has been open or it will be open. If they decide not to open at this uh, revolution, they'll wait another orbit and open it as planned at 11.37 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Well, apparently there's no word, and apparently the hatch has not been opened. This is Jay Barbary, NBC News at the Kennedy Space Center. New York. At the tone, 10 a.m. CBS News. Good morning. I'm Charles Osgood reporting on the CBS Radio Network. Inflation of Pete Conrad and Dr. Joe Kerwin reported just about ready to begin their unprecedented and tricky space walk. On Wall Street in the foot. Mission Control had given them the go ahead to open the hatch one hour ago. But when the space station flew back into radio contact with the ground, the astronauts were having troubles with some of the equipment used to cool their space suits. Mission Control had a brief, simple statement. Skylab Control, we still see five pounds per square inch pressure in the uh, airlock, so obviously the hatch is not open yet. If there are no further difficulties, astronauts Charles Pete Conrad and Joseph Kerwin should open the hatch in about 35 minutes in hopes of cutting or prying loose an aluminum snag holding the solar panel closed. If successful, they'll end Skylab's electrical power crises. Jay Barbary, NBC News at the Kennedy Space Center. More news after this. This gave the astronauts, Kerwin, Weitz, and Conrad, permission to open the hatch door in the airlock module aboard their big orbiting workshop. That presumably has been done as the spacecraft in darkness made its way around and now is passing over Carnarvon, Australia. Let's listen. We should hear Pete Conrad. He has... Way up over. Yeah, I see it. How far around can you see? I can see most of the disc cone tray. I can't see the surface. And I can't see the disc cone itself. It's too dark. I'm looking for the other disc cone. I wonder where the hell that is. I stand here. Where the hell's the world, anyway? They're discussing, uh, I may add here, the Discon antenna, which is one of the antennae they're going to use as a base of operations once they get out there. And they're going to tether themselves, bind themselves to that. They don't know that mission control has reacquired them. They've gone around, and they're now in contact uh, through Carnarvon, Australia. Rapidly peering around out here, deciding how far around Joe can get in the dark. We have not pulled umbilicals out. We're just cooling it. 
Now, the pole assembly went super slick. We had a little, I had a little juggling problem getting the last laundry with the tool on because I did it. Surprisingly enough, I have a Joe hold on to it in the airlock. We had it all the way in the airlock, and I found a way to snuggy the pole out next to the solar panel over to the ATM front end side and, and just line her up that way and pop her on. And as would be, in zero G, you know, those nuts do funny things, and most of them, we had checked them last night, we had backed off most of the locking nuts, but as you can guess, yeah, that's what we did with them is back them off. They went nuts back to tight, so we had to mess with those a little bit, but she's all rigged, ready to go, hanging on the hook here. Also, let me tell you the status of the outside. I have pulled the boom watch locks on both booms, C, C, and C, S. I have installed the C, S uh, hook. And we have loaded SO82A into the uh, workstation receptacle. And um, we're just standing by right now. Okay, is that the receptacle on the fast team? That's Pete the Conrad the describing what they have done. His reference to Joe, of course, is to Kerwin, who's his chief assistant on this repair mission. Uh, they're also going to uh, replace and uh, fix up a little film in the ATM while they're out there on the Apollo telescope mount. Joe wanted to go loaded, he wouldn't let me. Joe wanted to go loaded, but I decided we'd get off the checklist and we'd get all wrapped around the axle doing that. And the primary thing is to get this SAS panel out, so we are resting, hanging outside. I'm enjoying a lovely look at the moon. Yeah, that was our program. Yes. Hey, uh, well, Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, uh, I'm ready to start working on getting some cooling water. I think you got away. Okay, uh, PJ. And that's Paul White. He's uh, ready to do a little adjustment to his suit loop that's a little cooler than uh, they really wanted on the ground. He's going to stay inside and perhaps give some photographic evidence of what Conrad and Kerwin are going to start doing outside. The repair mission having gotten underway, they're in darkness. They're coming up across the Pacific Ocean now toward dawn. And once they get into a little daylight, they're going to really start the work. They have the equipment put together, as we heard, the pole, and some of the, the hook is out. And Conrad says he's just floating there looking around at the moon, looking at that huge piece of equipment uh, that has been his life's home now for uh, nearly two weeks. And he's just getting ready to see if he can fix the SAS panel. You heard that, the solar array system, uh, the stuck solar wing, which is the primary job of this repair trip. That's the status of the repair mission of Skylab. I'm Reed Collins, CBS News Space Headquarters in New York. At the tone, the time will be 11 a.m. CBS News, Richard C. Hoddle is reporting on the CBS radio network. The repair job to the damaged Skylab space station is getting underway. Reed Collins reports from the CBS News Space Headquarters. Half an hour ago on the night side of Earth, Conrad and Kerwin opened the hatch in the airlock module and began working their way outside with all the equipment to try and cut loose the stuck solar wing. That equipment consisting mainly of a long pole and a metal scissors operating on the end of it by cable. Whites remains inside the ship. Conrad and Kerwin are outside. The craft is coming toward sunrise now over Guam. Two tiny creatures in white spacesuits crawling around that 22-foot diameter exterior of the workshop, the first real emergency repair job walking in space. This is Reed Collins, CBS News Space Headquarters, New York. The mission is getting underway. Skylab repair spacewalk is about to begin. This is David Rush, and for a report, we switch to Jay Barbary at the Kennedy Space Center. Skylab is over the Pacific Ocean, headed for sunrise, with astronauts Charles Pete Conrad and Joseph Kerwin standing in an open hatch. The astronauts opened the hatch some 30 minutes ago as Skylab approached the sunset of its orbit over Australia. Skylab Commander Conrad and Mission Control. All right, now we look like we're about point two. What do you read, BJ? Okay, point three is okay for opening the hash beam. All right, go. Well done. Now here goes the hatch. All is 
set for the astronauts to step into space in about 10 minutes to begin their tricky spacewalk in hopes of cutting or prying loose an aluminum snag holding a Skylab solar panel closed. The solar panel is desperately needed to end Skylab's power crises. Jay Barbary, NBC News at the Kennedy. This is Reed Collins, CBS News Space Headquarters in New York. Apparently, the astronauts who've been outside about an hour now have succeeded in hooking a 20-foot pole down to the source of the trouble, and Pete Conrad is in the process now of trying to work his way down that pole on the exterior of the workshop. Let's listen briefly. All right, here you are. Stay where you are, Pete. I got it. Here, here. Stay where you are. Joe, that's your umbilical. That's another under his umbilical. God damn. Sorry, Jen. But... I uh, wish you hadn't pulled that rope out of the bag. Holy crisp. Listen, I gave it one tug and it all came. Kerwin and Conrad tangled okay. up. The umbilicals that give them life support out there. A little bit uh, confused among each other, off. between each other. I'll have to hunt each other. Here. Each other. No. I, okay. Now, which is which? Oh. It's the inside. All right. That's the one. But that's what comes with no practice, man. Now, let it cut your right. Hey, we're going to come out. you got to come out of the whole damn thing. I hope it goes under. <laughs> it's cut to. Huh? It must go under. All right. Or we never could have gotten in that box in the first place, right? Yes. All right. right. Now, am I free? All right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's under the pole. Yes. Right. Okay. I'll go. All right, bye. Tangled up a bit, the job ahead of Conrad to go down the pole, something like oh, a monkey. Yes, sir, we got you for another two and a half minutes. Where, where is the pen? Joe? Yeah, it's down there. The bed uh, is the beam uh, extension uh, tether. That's what I was afraid of. Okay, we got you for two minutes, and then we're going to have uh, about an hour drop out before we pick you up again at Goldstone. That'll be at uh, 1803. Okay. And you have about uh, 13 minutes of daylight left. And no big switch. Yeah, I, I'm watching it on the dash on the day night thing, Rusty. Okay, fine. Rusty Schweikart telling them when it's going and to get Paul, dark up there. two things going on. They're talking to Paul Weitz, who's inside in the command module, and he uh, moves around in there into the uh, other docking module occasionally. The two men, Conrad and uh, Kerwin, Dr. Kerwin, are outside. Conrad is trying to work enough umbilical life support cord free that he can work himself down the pole. Kerwin, having uh, hooked the shears on the end of the pole to something down at the source of the trouble, the solar wing that remains stuck. That's the current situation. Reed Collins, CBS News, Space Headquarters, New York. News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is George Engel from New York, and at this hour, the Skylab repair mission is underway. Astronauts Pete Conrad and Joe Kerwin are outside the workshop trying to release that jammed solar energy wing that's curtailed Skylab's power supply. Conrad got his first look at the problem close up a few minutes ago, and Pete Conrad described the aluminum strap that's binding the wing. The strap happens to be oriented in such a manner even though it's not wide, it's presenting its widest side to the cutters. Conrad has managed to snare that strap now. He'll try to cut, twist, or saw it to release the wing and extend Skylab's usefulness through all three manned missions in orbit. A deadline for U.S. troops. That story coming up. On 1 p.m. Gary Shepard reporting on the CBS radio network. 
Astronauts Pete Conrad and Joe Kerwin have been outside of Skylab for two and a half hours now, attempting to fix it. We'll have a report later in this broadcast. Now we're listening to the voices of the men. They've been out of contact for an hour. They've just reacquired their passing across the United States. Let's get a late report on the success of that repair job. Yeah, well, let's take care of our C-Gyro. We ain't got any of them. Okay, we're looking at it. All right, we're looking at it. Let's take a look where we are. We got the wing out locked. Okay, we're looking at it. Yeah, 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 we're looking at it. You better take a look up there and make sure that third one is clearing all the debris. That's what you're bugging me. All right? I'd do that myself. So that's the word. They have got the solar panel almost completely deployed, the one that uh, was remaining after liftoff, the one that refused to deploy. They should be getting more power. One concern mentioned by Conrad, the control moment gyros, uh, that which enable them to maintain... Their uh, attitude in space apparently are not exactly working right. That's the latest, though. Read column CBS News Space Headquarters, New York. CBS News Space Headquarters in New York. We're talking to the men of Skylab. Conrad and uh, his companion Joe Kerwin apparently have succeeded in freeing to a large extent that stuck solar panel, what they call the SAS up there. They've been without contact with the ground during their spacewalk for the better part of the last hour. However, a couple of minutes ago, they did come within contact with the Goldstone tracking station and reported they had freed the wing and it was almost completely deployed. They also questioned whether the gyros that maintain the position of Skylab with respect to the Earth were working properly, the control moment gyros, they call those. And uh, Mark, they seem to think that Mark, perhaps they were not. They're now in the process of trying to restow some of the gear as we can hear them hopping and hopping away up there. But unfortunately, I got yours down here, too, and I don't know why. Well, those are some of the words that uh, Kerwin and Conrad are going through. They're trying to stow each other's gear. The umbilicals that particularly pose a problem, getting everything back in. During the peak workload of Joe Kerwin, it was noticed his heart rates had reached 150 beats per minute, oh, no, and uh, minute. he was putting out a metabolic uh, energy rate of about 2,000 British thermal units, that's per hour. On the ground, it was decided that would be a little much if that continued. However, both men have uh, stayed within limits in terms of the time duration of this excessively hard work. They're in daylight again, as we say, passing over the United States. This, uh, as Mission Control notes, is for all intent and purpose just about the last stateside pass during which they'll have any good communications for the rest of this day, as we count days here. It's due to 100% skill and 0% luck, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm ready for you. All right. coming. Hand me the pole. I'll get it in a more favorable location momentarily. I'm you're, trying to manage. You're flailing around with it. I know it. Uh, Kerwin trying to hand yeah. the 25-foot pole. It comes apart and is in segments. Uh, so, uh, uh, this Houston, uh, if you've got to look at it, was uh, the inboard panel clear of debris or is it hanging yes. up on it? Yes. Okay, thank you. Still talking about the wing. Yes, I can tell. Mission control should be able to tell if they're getting any more power. Yeah, it's always been that way. Say yeah. again. Oh, we're talking to ourselves, Houston. But essentially, it would seem that mechanically, the repair job, however they succeeded at it, um, has been a success. A remarkable success in the this is the time. Men have had actual emergency repair work to do. There have been many spacewalks, but they've always been planned. The program has always been there. This being the first sort of ad-lib real emergency that people have met in space and uh, to some extent, as we can tell from their conversations, have conquered. Now it's clean. It's clean. On top of the York Tunnel, I can't see from where I am right here. There isn't anything out there but that old piece of meteorite shield that was underneath the thing. That sure is what it looks like. And you got From the angle I could get on it, it's completely clean, you're right, Pete. You guys called it pretty well. It, uh, when you cut the strap, it was under tension, and it went about two feet, and it stopped. It 
Yeah, and I had to break the, the, uh, oh, what you call it? Like a what? Oh, my uh, foolish six-foot cutter here is more of a hindrance than a help all of a sudden. We did get a little um, post-operative report from Conrad there explaining what he had to do when he went down the pole and uh, cut the strap that was holding the wing in. I'm not quite sure what to do with it. Plan called for him then to do a sort of push-up with a tether, and uh, this would bring a lot of tension on the wing itself and on the hinge and would allow it to unstick. It is spring-loaded and has oil on it, and it was assumed that by this long time, a couple of weeks in orbit, the oil on the hinge had frozen, and therefore the wing didn't flop out as it normally would have during launch or right after launch. We're still guiding each other back inside the hatch. Well, let's bring it on down. Okay, keep coming. I have to roll it here to get the blades in the right configuration to get by this pole. So they're taking the whole kit back inside. A long spacewalk, one which, uh, as we've noted, is, uh, is something that has some real meaningful work connected with it. It looked for a time as though perhaps it might not succeed when they left uh, more than an hour ago with no contact with the ground. Uh, they weren't too certain that they could accomplish this. But uh, when they reappeared on the day side and over the states in the past seven minutes, the word came that they did have the wing out, and we'll await the next word that they're back inside safely, and that that solar wing is still producing some energy, some power for the badly required electrical needs of Skylab, which continues on its flight, and the spacewalk is now in its final stages. This is Reed Collins, CBS News Space Headquarters in New York. At the tone, 2 p.m. The Skylab handyman have apparently been successful in fixing that stuck solar power wing. Reed Collins brings us up to date. Outside the spacecraft, Conrad and Kerwin fastened a 25-foot pole to the crippled solar wing. And Conrad inched his way down to the spot where the wing was bound to the workshop side by an aluminum strap. There was an hour's period when the orbiting laboratory was out of contact with Earth stations, and then the word came down. I'll tell you where we are. We got the wing out locked. The outboard panel and the middle panel are about half the same amount, and the third one is not quite. Now, Joe, I think before you come in, you better take a look up there and make sure that third one is clear and all the debris. Conrad had cut free the wing, and it had swung out and away, its solar panels partially unfolding. There was an immediate surge of electrical power as the sun's rays were converted into usable energy. The spacewalk repair had succeeded. This is Reed Collins, CBS News Space Headquarters, New York. And in history has succeeded. Astronauts Pete Conrad and Joe Kerwin have successfully deployed the broken solar power panel Everything apparently is all right. We got the late word from Mission Control. We believe that two of the uh, solar panels are deployed about 40%, uh, one about 30%. I, I don't have any power numbers yet, but uh, Eagle believes that in the present configuration of the panels, uh, there is enough power to charge all eight of the power conditioning group uh, batteries in the airlock module electrical power system. That was Mission Control spokesman Jack Riley indicating that everything was going well. Now what's going to happen is when they get into sunlight, they're going to pitch the spacecraft, turn it a little bit, so that that solar wing is aimed directly at the sun and things will heat up and the spacecraft panels will deploy. referred to news of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is John Grimes in New York, and at this hour, Joe Kerwin have apparently succeeded in freeing a jammed solar panel needed to keep Skylab supplied with electricity.
Here's the latest worldwide news from the American Entertainment Network. Bill Butel in New York reporting. Now, it's Conrad and Kerwin took their spacewalk today, and apparently they got the job done. They freed the solar energy wing, and it seems now that Skylab has enough electricity to keep going. The wing is not freed completely. Some of the panels comprising it are still not working properly, but the job is well enough done to call it a success, and the astronauts have come back aboard Skylab. Uh, Pete Conrad and Joe Kerwin performed the first emergency repair walk in space today. For the better part of three hours, they labored outside the Skylab. Kerwin was unable to cut away a restraining aluminum strap using shears at the end of a 25-foot pole. So Conrad himself used the pole as a handrail and went down to clip the strap away in person. Heaving together, they managed to free the wing and reported success when next they came over the United States. I'll tell you where we are. We got the wing out locked. The outboard panel and the middle panel are about half the same amount. And the third one is not quite. Now, Joe, I think before you come in, you better take a look up there and make sure that third one is clearing all the debris. None of them are out very far. All of them are according and evenly, and the angles between the panels look to me like about 20 degrees, Rusty. So they've got a good long way to go. The solar panels are partially deploying from the leading edge of the wing, and enough electrical power now trickles into the system for Skylab Director William Schneider to predict the regular mission plan is going to be completed. Yeah. The World Tonight. Good evening, I'm Douglas Edwards, CBS News. And Joe Kerwin took their dangerous walk in space today and managed to break loose the solar power wing that was jammed on the outside of the Skylab space station. Reed Collins reports from our space headquarters in New York. Working his way down a 25-foot pole lodged against the solar wing, Pete Conrad managed to cut the aluminum strap that had jammed the wing since liftoff May 14th. For Kerwin and Conrad, it was a first, the first emergency repair walk in space. The wings swung out and the solar panels partly unfolded. Ground controllers then tilted the Skylab so the newly flexed wing will warm in the sun in hopes the panels will completely unfold. Noting the increase in electrical power, the Skylab program director, William Schneider, said the wing repair should allow a return fundamentally to the original flight plan. Without the extra power, a multi-million dollar array of experiments might never see use. This is Reed Collins, CBS News, Space Headquarters, New York. Congratulations on the job to the Skylab crew in orbit. 